just a little bit of hum today which is what happens when you use old shit <laughs> <laughs> hey guys welcome to that pedal show dan here uh mick here we're all a bit beside ourselves uh we'll we'll maybe we'll just do this oh what was on the color drive uh, okay fine bit of hum right so have we done welcome we're all over the place we've done welcome have we Dan here, Mickey, hello. Did we do that? We did that. Because we're moved by tone. <laughs> that is extraordinary. Honestly. It's hard to play, as you probably discerned. It is a lesson in dynamics and amplitude. Thing in that clean sound, there's nothing on there. That yeah. was that was uh, you had a bit of chorus yeah. on there in one amp. But the clean sound was just the amplifiers. And when uh, sorry, and we of course we had a we had the an echo rack. Yeah. The the, the an echo rack baby in the wet app. What year's the echo rack baby? Oh it's old. Super it's, old. Yeah, yeah, late sixties. Yeah, so you know, almost older than both of us. Um <laughs> <laughs> definitely older than both of us. And it's noisy, so all the background noise you can hear today, uh, you'll have to forgive that, it'll be gone soon. Yeah. So for the record, a couple weeks back, few weeks back, a few good few weeks back now, in fact. Dan borrowed this 72 high watt DR103 100 watt original high watt from Chris at custom uh, pedalboards.co.uk and we brought it down and we plugged it in with the solar sound power boost type pedals, color sound power boost type pedals. And it was a revelation on a number of levels. So we thought, right, we obviously need a high watt in our lives. So we went and bought one. We bought this. <laughs> Off a, a very nice guy in London, and I went to pick it up. It's this is a '73. It's super clean. It's signed by um, Harry Joyce on the chassis. Was it was it Richmond you picked it up from? Kingston upon Thames. Okay, because I when you said that's the address, I went, oh, <laughs> there is someone that lives around there that has high watts, <laughs> um, but would never have any need to sell any. Okay. So we so we've now got our own. Uh, it's spectacular oh. and Dan's got to take this one back to Chris tomorrow so we thought well we've got two why don't we just plug them in and do do a number of things today one is hear them in an insane wet dry thing using the original echo rip which is what you just heard and we'll explore that a little bit in a, in a second secondly out of the first video that we did probably up after holy what an amazing sound um, the next question was, but can you attenuate it? So we've got, back there on the wall, we've got the Fright Power Station and we've also got the Universal Audio Ox. So once we've blown our minds with how bonkers they sound rigged up together, wet, dry, mm. we'll plug all that stuff in and we'll explore some attenuation options um, to bring it back somewhere closer to the real world. You know, that's, if, if, that, unfortunately, that's just not real world. It's not. I mean, you, two high watts is kind of Pluto. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know, too high watts attenuated is kind of, we're sort of back towards Mars. Mm. And then, yeah, kind of kind of earthly, almost. I can't believe I never did the high watt thing before. I know. Well, well, funnily enough, we so as we plugged in this morning, we tried not to do too much of that because we wanted to get the reaction as we plugged in. But I'm saying to Dan, I can. there's another amp crisis coming here. I can see it. Just... It's spectacular. You know, the weirdest thing is, it's because it has EL34s in it. You and the, the guys that you, apart from David G, um, you know the Who and um, Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page, and you know, and so you associate it with this rock sound, but the clean sound in it is it un. Parallels. There's probably lots of people going, oh, just turn it up and get it overdriving. We're not going to do that until we've got the attenuators on because it's, you know, it's hearing loss is what it is straight away. No so, wonder those guys are all deaf. That is, they are, the masters on each of the amps is kind of just below nine o'clock. Yeah. And that is as loud as we've ever played in here. Yeah. The funny thing, we, so we were, we bought uh, an 18 volt, um, Power boost, power yeah. boost from Stu Castle Dean um, builds them for uh, Macari's in London. Yeah, yeah, and that's a whole other journey that we have to explore. We're going to do that. I, I went, shout out to Anthony Macari. I went up there um, 
I was doing something else in London, don't you know, Danny? No, come on, where's the horn? <laughs> Who are you interviewing? I got to go and meet Doyle Barrel. It was very, <laughs> very, very cool. He is, I've met some cool people in my time, and he is on the, the list. Of most cool. Of most cool yeah, people I've ever awesome. met. Anyway, he was a sweetheart, and you can read that in Guitarist Magazine coming up soon. Will he come on the pedal show? Maybe in the future. Don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and anyway, I popped into Macari's, met Anthony Macari, because he'd seen the, the show we did on the, on the Power Boosts and said, oh, you know, pop in. I've got some really cool stuff to show you. And oh, my goodness. So Dan and I are going to go back, get into that journey a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and tone benders and to- that yeah, whole yeah. thing. I mean, what a fantastically interesting story. Wow. Okay. So, okay. Um, so what I was going to say, we were messing around with the color driver because we, we, we bought the 18 volt one and we we're trying with we're attenuating it and everything we're going to have to to mess around with that because its output is just colossal it's literally unusable so we in, in here in the context this, of what we're doing yeah. today so we plugged in the um the true fi uh color driver and turned it down and and it's sounded great but as we turned it down the and the amps came back up then when that went off and and I just hit a note and it was like your head being next to a snare drum because when we so normally when we talk about dynamics right <laughs> when we talk about dynamics and when you dig in um, a really good example is uh, when we had Danish Pete on and he was showing how he uses dynamics with his overdrive pedal how he plays soft and it cleans up when he digs in it it breaks up a bit more and that's dynamics in that sense. But when we talk about volume dynamics with yeah, yeah. this, because the, there is so much headroom, the amp, it doesn't compress. Yeah. When you go bang, it just delivers everything all at once. And it was like, holy crap. It's like the <laughs> difference between hitting you on the end of the nose with a rubber mallet and then smashing you in the face with a 32-ounce sledgehammer. Um unbelievable yeah, yeah, yeah. unbelievable right well on on which then let's explain what's going on i'll just turn this amp we've got them set wet dry this is the wet amp with the echo rec um that's the dry amp and the dry amp sounds thusly clean sound is just spectacular it's so fast it's fast oh, man. it just it delivers everything instantly and you're hearing that through a pair of evs yes we don't have the original high watt cabs so maybe that's to come in the future um so this will be dan is just messing around with my g2 because it's set for an idiot um, and this is the wet this is our yeah app of course, it has the echo rack on there. I do have this nifty little foot pedal, but I can mute the echo rack. Oh man! And here they are together. It's absolutely massive and just just teetering on the edge of painful for me, so we won't do too much more of that. Um, but it just it goes through your bones. It totally does. It totally does. So we'll get onto this in a second about the about the whole point of attenuation and all of that. So I won't I won't do that now. Let's have a quick look at what's on this board just before we move forward. Um, assuming we're not breaking any um, <laughs> boss NDAs because I hope this video will go out after that gets released 
that's the new uh, dimension C Wazza. Yeah, so it's and it's got the old rack unit in it and the pedal. Yeah, that yeah, we, that yeah. We yeah. played in Germany, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't talk too much about it. Have a listen to this. Go on, have a, have a play, Dan. So this is set of wet dry, which means um, only the clean guitar and overdrive is coming out of that amp, and out of this amp, you're hearing the effects as well, and you should hear that in your headphones when you when you hear it. So. Ridiculous. All day long, all the live long day. <laughs> it's madness, isn't it? So what we did there is uh, you were hearing various modulation effects coming out of the, the wet amp only. And I went through the dimension, which is a kind of a chorus. Um, the, what came next? The vibe, which is a phaser, obviously like a univibe type thing. That's glorious, actually. Um, the full tone one, mm. and then the rotary speaker, which is also a phasey type thing, but it's a rotary speaker simulator in the vent, just to give you actually quite an interesting little mini section on, on the Modulation. difference between those and three effects. When you have an amplifier that has that dynamic range, and then you hear that modulation stuff going on in that, it's a whole other world. It's a total new education in playing because I was listening and listening to you and watch you play, and it just it took you as it would take anybody a minute to understand where the dynamic was happening. As you were playing that rhythmic thing and you were going and hitting the strings, the hitting the strings was, was as loud as the Eddie, yeah. as the chords, and that just wouldn't happen at low volume, you know, on, on a on a small amp that was giving up a bit. And it's a whole new thing, isn't it? It's it is. a whole new yep. experience. Yep. Okay, so going to listen to a couple things before we get out of this mental volume. And 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 again, even even though the amps aren't turned up massively, it is mental volume. I, I mentioned <laughs> earlier that the that one's going through a two by twelve sealed back cabinet with EVs. This one's going through my two rock 
cab, which is a TR65B speakers, I believe, and it's open back. So, right, uh, just for a different kind of a different vibe mm. on that. Actually, it sounds really nice. Sounds glorious. I was yeah, I I wasn't sure because I was prepared to put the Marshall underneath it or even swap those out for the warehouse um, 12Ls. No, that but it sounds on. it sounds really nice. So I guess because the two rock. Uh, speakers they're designed to handle banging amplifiers, right? Yeah, and cre- and and you know the the two rock thing is is big everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And in that respect, it it, it shares a lot in common with the high watt actually, mm. in terms of that huge headroom and the speed of the attack and the response and all of that. So amazing. Okay, um, couple of different. We've got a few different overdrives on here. We've got the old Klon Centaur. I thought I'd stick that on just for to make things utterly ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> um, a BC one eight three. Well, can we a, hear that? Can we hear that, please? And a and a um, an Octafuzz two. So let's um, let's just see what we've got there. Uh, yeah. So what you hear straight off the bat is that the, the I'm gonna just I'm gonna play one chord, guys. Hold hold your eyes. And I'm gonna hit the guitar. Hold your ears. I mean, and this is how much the amp does not give up. It's bonkers. It's totally bonkers. So that's nuts. With our overdrive pedals, I'm gonna use the overdrive pedals to take a bit of volume out of that before we get into attenuation and we need to move on to that quickly. So, sure. uh, so let's hear the dear old clon then. Um... Add a high watt to the list of pedals that the clon really works with. <laughs> Most people don't set their clons like that, they set them more like this. Pretty sweet, actually. That's lovely. That's absolutely lovely. Uh, just going to turn that down because that might just go a little bit nasty. Uh, let's have a listen to this song.
Thins out pretty quick. Thins out pretty quick. Uh, dare I do this? So, a little observation. The really interesting thing about using a fuzz with an amp that has a lot of headroom. So one of the very first videos we did, we um, we had a uh, like a, that twenty watt Marshall mm. pushed, and then we had the Fender Twin, and we had the, the yep. big muffs and the fuzzes going between the two, and into the fender it was really harsh and horrible and then suddenly as the marshal everything made sense but into this because the mid-range sits in this really specific area where it's not it's not it's it's big but not just because the bottom and top you know yeah. what I mean? not because it has this massive hi-fi sound there are loads of mids in there um and when when you hear the fuzz and you're hearing the edges really clearly but it's the edges that where you're hearing the attack yeah yeah and you can just you can see why guys have been using the fuzz and the high watt combination forever because it you you hear everything that's going on with their fingers and the way that sits in a mix it is remarkable it is it's incredible it almost kind of demands that you play fewer notes as well and that you, yeah. you that you just hold on to it because it sounds so good yeah also it doesn't have that horrific plexi type bright cap on the on the high treble channel, which if you have the, you know, if you're able to turn your plexis up to 10, the bright cap's not there, it doesn't matter. But at low volume, it's horrific with a fuzz, isn't it? It's really, really horrible. And that's why so many plexis get modded mm. to change that bright cap on the input. This doesn't have that. Funnily enough, this sounds ace through my two rock. 
Yeah, really yeah, does, yeah, 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 really, yeah, yeah. really does, and I was, I was kind of surprised by that. And it sounds ace through this because you've heard it before. So, all right, there was a little um, run through some different kinds of fuzz and overdrive. Um, clearly, we could keep doing that all day, uh, and we shall. <laughs> it just sounds, it sounds unbelievable. Can it, you? And, but it is unusable, isn't it? Is difficult to use. You'd have to be on a massive stage. Mm with a loud band where you're allowed to turn up to this volume. And it's even, your gig, basically. It's, absolutely. You couldn't be in somebody's band yeah. doing that. But, you know, if you were uh, dear old Doyle <laughs> or Derek Trucks <laughs> or... Um, you met Derek? Uh, I spoke to him on the phone. Okay, that'll do. At length. That um, you know, if you're, if you're in that world, then you play as loud as you blooming want, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Hooray. Wow. Okay. okay. So we've heard that. It, it sounds spectacular. What didn't we hear? We did. We heard the first, the octave, the color driver, the clon. We heard all the mm -hmm. modulations. And yeah, we also threw on a bit of the other delay as well. So hopefully that was as enlightening for you as it was for us. It's actually... I'd need to play that for a few hours to be comfortable and to find a place where I'm where it's coming out as it should. Sure. Because it is... It's a world away. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a world away from that compressing amp thing and, and then having everything going into it, working with that compressing amp thing. I'd love someone who, like, maybe is used to playing with direct tones or has grown up on digital amps or has never Ex experienced that to just plug in and just gauge their reaction. Interesting, because you and I have, you know, have done massive tone thing forever and even you it's and still us surprising. plugging into that is is a revelation yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so cool. okay right. let's do a, a quick scooby-doo and when we come back things will be different all right <laughs> we just we just found out the scooby doing takes uh simon an extra 20 minutes to edit so we might we might not be doing that that often anymore <laughs> uh yeah because final cut has uh has the scooby-doo effect in but uh adobe premiere doesn't and you have to take it out into after effects redo the clip and then do it again <laughs> anyway so okay right back in the room one thing you will have noticed is there is much less hum from the room noise at this point because we don't have the vintage echo rec running and the amps are attenuated and turned down so to explain i have a mix moan it's been a while since we've had a mix moan down mix moan. Mix moan. my moan is doing anything like this kills everything dead right so you just need, if you're going to be setting up stuff like this, you need to set it up the day before. Okay. Or the morning in the afternoon where you're going to be doing stuff. Because we were chasing around for cables. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something about negative about the aux straight off the bat. It doesn't have an XLR out. Yeah, unusual. So balanced TRS, which is fine, but only if you have a balanced TRS cable. Handy. Which we didn't. Uh, it also does optical out, actually. So if you've got an optical, you know, get really lovely digital uh, output, should you have an optical input on your recording interface. This has already become too complicated, which is indicative of the point I'm making. <laughs> anyway, we finally managed to get it done. So to explain what's happening, this high watt is running through the Fryett power station, which, as you know, is Dan's favorite kind of attenuation machine. This high watt is running through the universal audio aux, mm -hmm. which, you know, controversial statement is, to my mind anyway, the best, easiest uh, load box stroke direct recording machine with um, speaker and room simulation in it. And I'd just like to say, it looks cool. <laughs> I think they've done a really good job of the aesthetic of that. Yeah. It not being positioned centrally on the amp is no, bothering me, yes, but the I handle was that. causing an issue, so we'll just have to get <laughs> over that. So what we're going to do now is have an exploration of what happens when you attenuate these amps and push them a bit harder. And also, we have the luxury of being able to record the aux direct as well. So in the audio mix, what you'll hear is the actual amps on the cabinet here and also some virtual mics on uh, a cabinet of our choosing. If Simon would like to just pan around, I'm really scared about moving this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, this is what Mix the Ox... massive iPad. Is, are you getting a nasty flare off that, Simon, or is that okay? Um, this is what the Ox uh, interface looks like on the iPad. As you can see, 
we've ch chosen a cabinet that's very much like the one we're using we might swap that around in a sec and you can you can affect mic position you can do all kinds of other cool mm. things actually which we've done before but for anyone who hasn't seen it that's what the aux um, interface looks like and all will be obvious hopefully on screen in terms of captions and, and what you're hearing so i'm going to do the usual thing put my guitar down because there's going to be some running backwards and forwards to the um also universal audio uh audio interface to just change our levels because we're going to be playing quieter than we were earlier so there'll be some of that uh it's just in the mic levels and stuff okay, pokery cool. jiggery to do so daniel let's remind ourselves where we were I don't think we can remind ourselves 100% where we were, because I think even just having the aux plugged in gives you some level of attenuation. Right. Speaker right. volume five. And I'll just turn this one off. Just want sort to of check the phase between those two, one second. The face. So if, um, it probably was the echo rack. Right. Two things. One, that's loud <laughs> and lovely and massive. Uh, two, when we talk about phase flipping in and out, like Dan just explained, the echo rec was flipping the phase on this amp. So he had to correct it back here. When you listen to the video, I've already corrected the phase on all the mics. So it's very rare that you'll hear the mics out of phase. That happens in the audio edit. Right. Sometimes. Anyway, blah, okay. blah, blah. Right. So what we're going to do is we'll turn this one off. Goodbye, you. Uh, and we're going to listen to this one um, with the effect of the power station. Okay. Does that work? Yep, perfect. So uh, if you... Um... So what you heard there was I turned the attenuator on, the power station on, and it went from really loud to really quiet. You will have perceived a massive drop in volume because not only did it get much quieter in the room, but the microphones were gained up, gained really low because it was so loud. So right. I then walked okay. over to the audio interface and turned the input gain on the microphones up. So hopefully by the time that was all finished, the actual volume of what you were hearing before and then the attenuated signal is roughly the same in your headphones mm -hmm. or however else you're watching. So what we're comparing here is tone and it's clearly overdriving more. Yeah. Do you like it? Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> it's compressed, but it's still edgy. It's not in the least bit painful volume. No, it's lovely. It's uh, quieter than we would normally play in here. I would say if we had the dB meter, you would have been seeing 120. Before, yeah, oh yeah, at least. And but the spikes, yeah, when you're digging in, would have been yeah. up. 
compared to what you know this is on our old db meter and i think you'd be getting about 95 there 90 maybe sure <laughs> That is gorgeous. So that is, uh, just in case Simon can't get in with, uh, with the camera, the channel volumes are sort of around to here, and the master volume is somewhat likewise. If that was on now, that would be it curious. would literally be permanent hearing, dam hearing yeah, yeah. damage, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah. It would be, wouldn't, you know, Dan and I do some pretty stupid things in here, but I, I wouldn't do that. No, no, not through the EVs. Yeah. So there you go. That answers the question, what does it sound like through the... Uh, the power station. You now, need to have a go on this because this is amazing. done that with the amp unattenuated ah. the lifting volume from this would be insane colossal but because the amp is overdriving it just pushes it into more overdrive yeah see for me that's just a bit too hairy yeah, it's a bit too i couldn't that's for a set, if you wanted that sound it's great but you can't very difficult to work with that so let's put it back from there mm -hmm. um, that is just gorgeous That is awesome! Okay. Wow. <laughs> just, just play me a an, a, an open E chord. So I've taken the amp going from as overdriving as it was down to that. That yep. is what the amp actually sounds like. Now play a really quiet E chord. Off. Turn the attenuator off. 
Um, that's blowing out our input, uh, yep. our mic inputs, but uh, it's taking it down a bit. Yes. Not a huge amount. So here we go again. That's taking it down. So I think the sweet spot is somewhere probably here a bit. That is just chewy, but it's got that the high watt top end, which is a different top end than any other amp I've ever heard. It's a, it's wonderful. So it it's compressing. Mm. You feel that natural amp compression, but it still has that chime, that so high watt chime. There's a couple of things to mention in in relation to that, where when the amp isn't attenuated, all the overdrive pedals react totally different. Cool. Yeah, to the amp when you attenuate it. You said everything differently. Everything is different. Yeah, yeah, it squashes yeah. it harder. So to answer the question, does it sound the same at lower volume? No, it not even nearly. And no. certainly you can't feel it in your bones and all of that. And it, it it it's much less satisfying for me personally, but much easier to play. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. And the the unattenuated high watt is an experience. Yeah. And it's the first time we did that in here, I was fundamentally changed. <laughs> Now this is, it's different in the sense that it's still that high watt sound. It's not unmistakably yeah. that those high watt curves, but it's at a level where it's like, oh, okay, this is comfortable and easy and appropriate, Yeah, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, you could easily, I mean, you, Oh, the sound engineer would have to be very bad tempered to tell you to turn down from there. Yeah, yeah. that'd be the kind of gig where I'd be like, "Yeah, not for me then." Yeah, sure. This is a silent stage environment, and you can do with that what you will. Death of rock and roll. Hear the nails going in the coffin. I've decided to become not on our watch, sunshine. I, I've decided to become a passionate ambassador to save rock and roll from silent stages. Nice, because it's dying, people. Don't let it die. Um, right. Uh, Okay, so that's a really good idea of what the attenuator does to the high watt. Mm -hmm. Now, the aux does a slightly different job. It does two jobs. It, it does attenuation, but it also does speaker simulation. So let's have a listen to what the aux does. Uh, and I'm going to have to think about this as we do it so that the edit is easy. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, give us a give us something, there, Dan. This is this is the unattenuated high watt as we had it set before. Okay, don't hit this hard. Okay. Just lifting it massively. So that's unattenuated. So you, you play and I'll attenuate it back. Okay. Lovely. Doing a very similar job. Yeah. I guess we are hearing the difference in the speaker cabs as well. Yeah. You liking that less, more, the same? For the rock, for the amp rock sound. Yeah. Because that closed back cabinet yeah. really is a massive part of that. So I'm hearing the 
the more openness to it. Yeah. I think what I remember about the Ox before is that I'm always looking for a, a setting between three and four. Uh, so if you just okay. play this for a sec. That is a huge jump. Yeah, keep going. Massive. Yeah, it does. I I concur, good sir. Yeah. So certainly for the in the room experience, mm. somewhere between three and four would be the, the sweet spot for me. Mm -hmm. Let's go to four, turn the amp down a bit and see what happens. Okay, keep going. So, sorry, five is completely open. It's not, I actually think it's not completely open. All right. It's, it's near as damn it. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I only, only nudge you back one, one thing. Yeah, here you go. Here's, here's full, just be careful. Yep. Okay. So take a bit of that off. So what I want you to do now is just play me a very simple chord sequence a couple times through and what you'll see on screen is the sound of the mics in the room. Okay. Royer uh, R121 mm -hmm. and a Sennheiser E906 dynamic compared with um, a virtual Royer 121 and a SM57 on a, on a similar cab. Okay. S similar, similar, right? So um, if you could just play me, uh, let's say, just go twice through a, a chord progression. Okay. Oh, sec. So I just turn the color boost off so you're only hearing the amp. Okay. There we go. Uh, obviously, I can't really hear what, what Ox is hearing and what Ox is outputting. So we are going to, you know, we, we will hear that in the mix and probably it will be worth a podcast afterwards. Absolutely. Hello to all our podcasters. Yeah, users. hello podcasters. Right, okay. We're galloping towards the end of this video. Um, we've been going for quite some time. We've been through the unattenuated amps. We've been through the attenuated amps and we've had a really brief listen to microphones 
versus the Ox's virtual mics. Mm -hmm. So I think to finish off, let's turn them both on. What I'll do for this final section of the mix, you will hear this high watt, two high watts. It's crazy. 72, 73. Yeah. And a whole new revelation. Yeah, a whole new experience. <laughs> Uh, so you'll hear the mics on this one, and then uh, I'll mix in just the ox. So it will be wet, dry. You'll be hearing wet with the ox, dry with the mics. Nice. Does that work? Yeah, yeah. Grab your, grab your beast. Oh yeah, of course. I'd forgotten. Play the guitar. Um, I can play this. Ah, too shaggy, sir. The nice people at McMull sent Dan and I a couple of guitars to try out. Regular viewers will know that I'm an utter miserableist about non-Fender <laughs> guitars that uh, sort of purport to the Fender style, but it's a cool guitar and I am going on a journey with Strats at the moment, which I'm going to... This is fascinating. Not, this is not a Stratocaster, watching by the way. The journey. Uh, I'm going on a journey because I've fallen out of love with my blue guitar just briefly and um, I'm on the hunt for a new one. So I'm just I'm asking myself a few questions, hence this guitar. Right. Turn both amps on. I've been saying all week, so in the responses to the video, when we had the high watt on, people saying, why don't you just use an attenuator? Sounds much better, and I'm going, no, man. 
<laughs> no, I hate attenuators. I hate them so much because it just takes away my soul, man. <laughs> what a load of rubbish. That sounds... Yeah, just... I mean, for sure, the, 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 the full-on bone-shaking beauty of it isn't there. But, I but think... you need the, the interesting thing about that is you need to differentiate between the experience of volume and... I, I, I wouldn't have been able to play what I just played yeah. at that yeah, yeah. volume. It would be scary. My organs would be moving. Yeah. And we'd be getting tinnitus. So what's interesting, it's another feather in the cap of using two amps because the difference in a single amp attenuated down, which to me sounds thin and scratchy and mm, often and having the two. odd. Having the two, you get that bottom end coupling thing, which happens. You get the movement of the wet dry, which just sounds spectacular. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I do know how it translates across the video, and it's wonderful. I would love to be in a situation where I could just get someone to sit here and listen to you do what you've just done in this experience because it is genuinely moving. It's genuinely emotional. I, you know, I just wish people could experience this. I don't know, maybe we need to find a way. Okay, um, have, have some swang on this then, Dan. By the, this is the last time you'll see my pedal board look like this, probably, because we're rebuilding it. And we're rebuilding Dan's two, and those videos are coming. So the reason that there's some odd things on here is because I'm trying some stuff out. Awesome. Uh, right, come on then. See what you make of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word oh my goodness there might be elements of ox in that and we might put the mics up depending on what i hear when i mix it but um what a sound i mean that is that sound you could get away with that over if you had a drum kit in here that would be an appropriate volume maybe maybe a smidge on the loud side but not massively no perfectly no. not not even so People often ask if Dan and I use hearing protection, and we don't because we don't like it when we're playing. But I have a very, I've got a point where I know that absolutely that it's too much. Yep. And that's not a ridiculous level. It's just I just I know that it's not right at that point, mm. and so I I, st I stop there, and usually sit way, way below that. And this is way below that. Yeah. yeah. Colossal. Just. <sighs> I'm so pleased we did this. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. I mean, okay. We're in a ridiculously, <laughs> uh, a, a, you know, the privileged position to have two vintage high watts. So we had to do this. We had to share it. Yeah, because yeah, this not? is going back tomorrow. You just don't get to do um, this stuff. No, uh, but we don't get to do this stuff. No, it's um, I'm I'm going to say, if you are if you're confused about what amp to buy, if you like pedals, <laughs> right? And you're and the thing is, okay, I, is. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love my AC30. I, the the audio kitchen um, is amazing. You know, um, the, you know the, the hamstead is the same thing. And there there are certain elements of all the amplifiers that I love. But if if you're if you're 
not sure, just go and buy a vintage high white and <laughs> and you don't have to worry about it anymore. That's it. And actually, you know, you say, oh, don't be ridiculous. They're loads of money. It's half the price of my two rock. Yeah. And it's, you know, plenty of plenty of booty camps are three grand plus now. That's right. Um, I know it's, that is ridiculous for a lot of people to even think about spending that much money on an amp. But, you know, what we paid for that, we will literally be able to sell it any day between now and the end of time for as much, if not more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's an investment, Dan. That's what I said to the wife. <laughs> nice. Well done, buddy. <laughs> Proud of you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you hasn't if you haven't subscribed. Um, I want to thank uh, Chris, a cousin pal boys, for lending this because without that, that wouldn't have happened to start with. You know. So yeah, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, okay, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon who make this possible. Thank you guys so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Um, we do. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone as if I don't care. I do care. I, there's an essential piece of information that I need before the end of this show. Okay. Thank you, Patreon guys um, and girls. To our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. Your Anderson's uh, order will be delivered today. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. What have we got coming from Anderson's? We've got a bass amp and a bass Dan. Do we? Yeah, yeah. No, is that's it? coming from Fender. Manderton's, we've got we have a pedal, a pedal train. board yeah. for a bass player. Um, yes, we have... James Allen. Thank you, James Allen. I'm really sorry I couldn't bring your name to mind because my brain is too full of your ex high watt Oh, that's James. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, James. Uh, okay. Uh, also, in the... Australia, USA. the USA, uh, USA, Rift City guitar of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and uh, New Hope, Minnesota, and another store as well. Hello, guys. Uh, and Australia, Pedal Empire in Brisbane, Queensland. They had a picture on their Instagram. Oh, by the way, we are on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff as well, and we share little snippets. But on the Instagram of Pedal Empire, Joe Bonamassa popped in. Oh yeah, I saw and bought a. G4 rotary thing. Nice. Very cool. Uh, where we get to? Oh, yes. Shop. Shop. T-shirts. I, I bought this because it's the closest thing we have to 1972 and 1973. 1969. Ah, very good. This is what that pedal show looked like in 1969. And I bought this because it's only how to clean. <laughs> um, that's it, mate. That's it. Thanks We're to, to go. Uh, 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 McMull for sending this. I really do like it. It's a spectacularly good guitar. It's a corker. So I like the finish on it as well. It's That's part of the journey. It's part, nice. of the journey. part of the journey. And we'll see. We'll see. You're going to play some more stuff. Cheers, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>